In this video, I'll be discussing using the DNA gel analysis ribbon uh, for analyzing an image. So if you had not added the DNA gel analysis during acquisition, if you come to the analysis ribbon, uh, you can click on the type and choose DNA gel, or you can also access this through the quick start up here at the top and choose DNA gel. Now chances are it will not be in the correct location. So on this new ribbon, what I prefer to do is to click on this redraw boundary. And then you come over here and click and drag an area around just to the outside of your lanes. And then you set the number of lanes right here. So this is a 10 lane gel. So I set 10 at that point. And if you need to, uh, once you have added uh, the, the correct number of lanes, if you need to make some adjustments, you can do that to the border right here. Now the lines just need to go somewhat through the middle of the lanes. They don't have to be uh, exactly through the center, uh, but just uh, kind of in the general location. Uh, the bands should not fall in between the lines. The lines should be going through the bands. So next off, you want to click Find. And from here, you can adjust the sensitivity of the band finding. So if, if you need more bands to be found, you can click on the More. Uh, you can do fewer if it finds too many. Um, or you can manually edit the bands. So if I want to add a band marker, I can just click those bands right there. Uh, if I need to, I can also delete bands. So if I go back up, because uh, right now I'm still in the add mode, so if I were to try to edit any of these bands, it would just drop another band on top of it. So I need to either hit the uh, select button right here or press the escape key on the keyboard. And so if I highlight a band that I want to remove, it be, uh, if it has the hash line, then simply click on the delete key on the keyboard and it will remove it. We also have the option of adding to all lanes, uh, which I'll come back to here in just a moment. But first I want to add my marker. And um, once, I, once I have added that marker, then I can use the all, add to all lanes. And the reason for that is the all lanes will add a row of band, band markers to all non-marker lanes. So when I click on that, if I come here, uh, just for example, and then I click, then it adds band markers all the way through there. Now again, I'm still in this add to all lanes mode, so if I need to go back and edit any of these, I I uh, have to click the select or press the escape key on the keyboard. So what I want to look at here is the, the band or the molecular weights. And what's important to note here is that the highest band on here must match up with the highest molecular weight on here. So if, if those don't match up, uh, it throws throws the calculations off, and uh, this will not be accurate at that point. Uh, and so if you need to make adjustments, so, or if you're using a different molecular weight marker, uh, you can add or remove any of these in here to match up with the marker that you have. And if you make adjustments to this, let's say if I remove one of those, click OK, then it becomes a custom marker, and then you will want to save this marker set and just name it, give it whatever name uh, that you feel is appropriate. Now I can use uh, one, two, or three marker lanes on here. Uh, the more that you use, the more accurate the, uh, the calculation will be on the, the molecular weights. Uh, if, if you do one, it by default puts it in the left-hand column. Uh, if that's not actually the location, if you highlight this M1, you can then move it, and now this becomes my molecular weight marker. Uh, if I do two, it puts them in the outer lanes, and then three, it puts one in the center. And again, if that's if they're not quite in the right location, you can move that M1, and then that becomes your marker lane. Background subtraction. Uh, if you have previously used the, the shapes uh, for doing uh, quantification, we have the same average and median calculations that we had before. Uh, and we also have the addition of lane. Uh, now lane is fine if you have a nice, uh, clean 
lane right here. Uh, but if there are some non-specific bands uh, that have not been designated as bands, lane probably is not your best option because it will use those areas for doing the background subtraction, which may not be all that accurate. Uh, so, but using the local backgrounds uh, can be uh, a much more accurate way than the lane, uh, depend, just depending on what, your, uh, what, what the lane looks like. And you can choose um, all sides, right and left, or top, bottom, right or left, and then you can also choose the border width uh, for that. And this is all explained a lot more thoroughly in the uh, shapes video. Now, as far as the data themselves, if we come here to the DNA gel bands um, table, and if I highlight one of these, we, what we see here is that we have the signal and the molecular weight is uh, shown right there. And, um, and that is determined for every band on here. Uh, as long as the molecular weights fall within the range of uh, the marker that is on there. Now the DNA gel lanes, if you want to, if I wanted to change the name here, let's say I change the sample name right there. Uh, this lane name is also carried over into uh, the DNA gel bands table. And so then that uh, name is added there. So if you do want to name uh, your samples throughout here, uh, you can do that uh, very simply in the, in the gel lanes table, and then that is carried over here as well. So if you have any further questions on this uh, analysis ribbon, please refer to the help section. Thank you.